Welcome to the station of information inside your head. This is Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by actor, writer, director. Seems like she she's she knows about everything here. Kelly Fanson, how are you doing? <laughs> I got a few things going on in my head. Very good, very good. So uh, it's Thanksgiving here in the states, but uh, I was just I was going to complain that it's 20 degrees out, but you said it's like negative 14, and I feel like a pansy. Yeah, it's negative 14 where I am. I was just in New York, and uh, it was about it was like plus 14. So, so in about a day's time, I've gone from something very manageable to whatever sweet hell this is that I'm in. Uh, I was just in uh, Buffalo, and then we drove up to New York, and I noticed that it's a lot easier to get into Canada than than back out. Uh. So basically, like it's it's hard to get into the U.S. is what you're saying. Yeah, well, it took a lot longer. We had to yeah, traffic. well, I mean, I think you, you probably got tougher borders. I mean, you got a lot going on. I don't know. We're pretty. I guess we'd be laid back by comparison. Yeah, yeah. The, at the border, going into Canada, they were just wondering why we had uh, pink uh, hats on. That was the only thing he <laughs> really. Wanted. We're curious people. Yeah. We just want to know all about you. Hey, we don't expect any, we don't expect any, any bad news. It's all good. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us about, uh, best before? Why did you have, what, why, why did you have pink hats on? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, do you know the movie Greasy Strangler? Uh, gosh, I wish I did. If you don't, you're probably wondering what the hell is that, but. It's a uh, it's a very bizarre horror comedy that came out uh, last year, and uh, they have these pink uh, stocking caps. I think you guys call uh, popes, maybe, and it says greasy across the front. And uh, we were both uh-huh. wearing it because we both liked the movie. It's not the greatest okay. story, but it's a. Re- I would recommend the movie. It's totally bizarre. Uh, uh, greasy strangler. Yes, even just the name. Yeah. It, catches me it's like it's a strangler and he's greasy it's like that's, so I have that's to pretty watch. much what i added it up to be as well <laughs> right, right. And you, it's i don't know movie, maybe there's a surprise in there somewhere it's the movie you either gonna absolutely love or absolutely hate it's not gonna be like i think it's okay or anything like that it's it's right, uh, right. Of, maybe love to hate it how about that <laughs> maybe, so. maybe so i hope you like it <laughs> Can you I'll tell put it on the list. There, there's good. so many things on Netflix these days. How can I possibly keep up? Yeah, it's it's on somewhere. I think it might be Amazon streaming, but I'm sure it's somewhere you can find it. Right, it's really, it's right. One of those melting pots of entertainment. Right. So, can you tell us about Best Before? I saw that the uh, that it's relaunching. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, that um, that was just a little thing that I did for on YouTube with uh, with um, like a comedy partner, and uh, we were both. You know, I create shows for television. That's sort of what I do when nobody's watching, and um, and you know, there's a lot of development that goes into uh, creating a TV show. Where for the web. You know, back when we decided to do it, which is probably three years ago now, uh, it was really just a a desire to make something without having to jump through a lot of hoops. We just self-produced it and we wrote some stuff and and, uh, tried to to make it funny and and talk about things that we we related to being 40-year-old women um, whose kids have grown and, and trying to live and figure out who we are in the world today, kind of like a coming of age again story. So, uh, we didn't, we didn't really develop it much. We just started to shoot and, and have fun, which, you know, is, is really refreshing. Um, you know, that that's available, that you can just pick up a camera and, and away you go. So, uh, I want to, um, I guess basically we won a, a director's award, a directing award for, for um, uh, 2017 for the show. And uh, we decided that we'd just, you know, relaunch it because we uh, hadn't uh, made another season yet. And we're just getting to talks about what that looks like right now. So, um, so we thought we'd give the, the relaunch and let that kind of brew 
out in the world for a while while we're getting our uh, our next project up. Yeah. So uh, uh, you said uh, yeah. your writing part, your writing partner in there. How long did you two work together before this? Oh, we we never had before. We sort okay. of knew of each other, and uh, and then we just decided that we'd, you know, that we, I don't know, that we'd make a great pair. And it turns out we had really great chemistry and uh, had a really fun time making these videos. Uh, and on top of that, we played best friends in the videos, so our friendship, you know, grew very quickly um, just based on the characters we were playing on screen. Mm-hmm. Were, were, was it scripted mm-hmm. or was it kind of like ad lib? It was a bit of both. Uh, it was a bit of both. There were um, we wanted to work uh, with a scripted format for sure, and then there were times that you know we would just go with the moment. We didn't have anybody telling us we couldn't, so yeah, we add something here or there all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of neat that you can just film something now and put it up on YouTube and. Uh, people can discover it and have a good time with it. Yeah, well said. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your back background in? Uh, were you first a comedian or were you first a writer or an actor? Which came first? <laughs> For me, that feels like a chicken and egg story. But um, no, there, there is actually a, a, a beginning. I was a child actor. Um, when I was seven, I screen tested for Annie and uh, and kind of toured live um, for about a year, um, performing Annie songs and, and playing Annie on television and just singing and dancing my way around uh, the GTA with um, Columbia Pictures was basically uh, the ones who were searching for the next Annie. So there were seven of us that, out of, you know, thousands of girls that, that were doing that. And um, from that, I ended up uh, getting an agent. Uh, the other six girls already had agents. Um, I I was just working um, in theater at the time, so uh, I was only seven. So anyway, I, I got an agent and I was working very quickly. I ended up working pretty steadily um, for a number of years as a kid. Oh, okay. So when did you uh, when did you go from you know just being a a performer to uh, to on the creative side? Well, I mean, being a performer is definitely it's the creative, creative side, too. Um, so uh, when did I start banging my head against another wall and not just right. the performing one? Um, <laughs> yeah. I um, Well, even when I, like, I ended up going to school in New York. Um, I moved there when I was 17. And uh, even when I was there, I was, I was doing um, some side projects. I was going to the academy, and you're not really allowed to work while you're uh, going to school, but, but I was, you know, sort of, I did get involved with little companies here and there to do some stuff, um, you know, helping friends out with their, their scenes and with their songs. Like I just always liked kind of getting my hands in everywhere and not, not just, uh, not just acting. Um, and then uh, it was a few years later and a friend of mine asked me if I would uh, write a, screenplay with her it was actually a a horror and um i had made a few shorts at that point some experimental shorts um having come back to toronto i was uh a new mom and uh and and you know still working in the business and also sort of making my own stuff which i've always liked to do and uh, we wrote a screenplay and it was uh optioned by whiz bang productions out here in toronto and um and we were in development with them for probably five years. So I, my experience as a writer was probably the next major ordeal in my life because I was, um, you know, writing consistently in development and getting paid as a writer uh, with, with my very first screenplay. A lot, of, a lot of learning experiences in that one. Yeah. So uh, what happened to that? Did, did the horror movie uh, come out? <laughs> Well, you know, that's one of those industry stories. I don't know if you want me to get into it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of the way the business goes. We, we had a screenplay and, uh, there was, it, it was our, my very first screenplay. So, um, there was a little, uh, tweaking to be done and we ended up working with, um, 
uh, a story consultant, and uh, and then that progressed to a script doctor, and uh, we had you know lots of notes and many years of development, and in the end, um, it's it's kind of too long a story. I don't think you want to hear it all, um, but anyone out there who's ever had a screenplay that's you know, been been optioned and in development and slated to be, a, uh, you know, the next um, the next production out of the gate, um, and to know that that doesn't happen knows there's usually a bunch of reasons out of your control. So, yeah. uh, again, lots of learning experiences, and I wouldn't uh, I I wouldn't take that away for anything. Mm-hmm. Is that? Uh, uh, well, I assume... well, I'm sorry. I was going to say, like, with, with all creative endeavors, you know, um, with, especially when it's an idea, ideas never really go away. So um, even that from, I don't know, that was 15 years ago, I guess, um, you know, there's still elements to that experience and, and that story that even years later, you know, I've been able to sort of rework certain things into other stories or you know, make it into an entirely different entity. Mm-hmm. Well, I was about to ask is it how frustrating it is to come up with something that doesn't ever uh, come to fruition, but uh, I guess you kind of answered that, and you could take it and use it in different areas. Well, how frustrating is it? Um, yeah. Yes, you can, you can use these things. Um, you know, sometimes when a project is done, if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't get made, then you know, I have different experiences with that. Sometimes I just put something to bed, you know, that doesn't mean it, it goes, you know, it doesn't get burned in a fire, but, um, it gets put to bed and that doesn't mean it can't come back at some point, but it is disappointing. It, it, it can be a frustrating process. Um, I do think like anything, whether I, it's performing, auditioning, not getting a role versus getting a role. Um, you know, I find, I just sort of take it as it comes now. I love to develop stuff. I love working with ideas. Uh, I also like collaborating. And, you know, if something doesn't go, I just figure, well, it, it wasn't the right time, or maybe there's another place for it. Mm-hmm. You mentioned doing uh, experimental shorts, and I see that you have a, a new short coming out, Cleveland Disguise, that's going to be at uh, the festivals. Um, can you tell us what that's about? Uh, that's called Cleverly Disguised, not uh-huh. Cleveland. <laughs> I'm going to edit this so I look very smart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Cleverly Disguised is a, is a short film um, that is being submitted to festivals. I uh, certainly hope to see it in, in many, many festivals uh, in the next year. Um, it's, a, it's a dark comedy uh, drama I think it's it's a bit of a drama with comedy elements, let's say. But uh, it's about a superhero who reflects back on his life uh, and the sacrifices he made to fulfill his destiny. Mm. It's almost like an anti-superhero movie. <laughs> but it has a twist ending. It has a twist ending. So you actually find out who he is. Um, you don't actually know when you're watching the film exactly what, what his powers are and, and you know who he is as a person um, until the very end, and that's kind of the big reveal. And hopefully, there's a good payoff in that. Yeah. Now, I've noticed over the last few years that uh, that short films have really uh, become popular. Like at fest, I think it's because there's festivals, and uh, with the internet, you could put them up so people can watch them. Uh, do, do you yeah, think there's that, a place for them now. Yeah, because it used to be. Uh, yeah, what would you do with the short? You know, once you had the festival run. Well, I guess it depends. I mean, they can be interstitials, um, you know, maybe it, mine's uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes, and and that could go, uh, you know, on a porter flight from, uh, you know, Toronto Billy Bishop Airport to Newark. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, there's just enough time. You know, you don't have time for a feature, but maybe you've got time for a short. Right, right. I, I also know short's a r- relative term because it could be like two minutes long, and I was at a festival uh, festival the other week, and some of them were like forty minutes long. So it it could really oh, yeah. it has a very yeah. long range. Yeah, I think they might be somewhere like it has to be under seventy minutes or something. I I'd have to check what the uh, 
the longest format for a short would be, but yeah. um, I think yeah, I was told it was like I think I was told it was forty seven minutes, and then from forty seven minutes to something else, it's called a short feature. Right there, you go. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people listen. People listen to this to, to find new knowledge. Right, knowledge is power. All right. How about the next step coming to Netflix? Oh, the next step. That was um, that was a TV show I was on, uh, or I am on. I guess I shot that last year. Um, it's a it's a kids dance show, uh, sort of like a reality style um, format, and uh, I get to play this really nasty kind of. Mm, Manipulative dance instructor and a dance mom. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, because I was I saw it was about dancing, so I didn't know if you danced in it. Um, I don't really dance in the show, but my background was in dance as a kid. Um, I I danced until until I decided I didn't want to have a career in it, and I wanted to be an actor or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I was uh, I was a dancer pretty much seven days a week as a kid. So, as a child actor, did you base your character in this uh, on any of your own uh, like parents or other parents that you saw from other child actors? Um, I didn't base it on my mother because she wasn't. I mean, I guess she was a stage mom, but she wasn't a typical stage mom. She was she was uh, just she was just having fun with me. She was easy going about it. Um, but uh, my dance instructor that I, I had from the time I was five until, uh, gosh, maybe about 16 when I started to, to branch out a little bit, um, she, was, uh, she was very strict and, um, and also a good friend of mine uh, as, I, as I got older. So um, I was able to really kind of play with her uh, with, with all sides of, of who she was and definitely that scary dance instructor who I, I first met when I was five or six years old. I, I think I channeled that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you got, uh, you know, I uh, mentioned a horror movie, a lot of comedies, dance. What's like your preferred genre? Uh, um, I, I don't know. I don't think I have a preference. I, I have a, I have all of those things inside me, and I I really like any one of them while I'm while I'm involved in it, whether it's a comedy or a drama or whatever. It could be a horror comedy. Like it's all for me. Um, it's just creative work. It's fun to play. Yeah. How about for you to watch? What kind of stuff do you watch? Or do you maybe you don't have time to watch stuff? I don't. Know. I I actually don't watch. I feel like I should watch more because of what I do for a living, sure. but um, I'm I'm a binger. So when I get on a show, um, I I'll stay up. I'll be up for eight hours just you know with my eyes glued to the tube. Mm-hmm. And I still consider a movie theater my church. So when I get a chance to go, it's sacred. I agree. There's nothing. Uh, you know, it's cool to watch a movie on TV or your computer, but it's uh, or do you mean theater like uh, like live plays? I, I still love live theater. I unfortunately don't get out to live theater enough. Um, and I don't get out to, to see films enough, like really. But when I say enough, it's all relative. Like I, I could go every night of the week. <laughs> right. It's just who's got the time? Who's got the time? Especially yeah. with what I do, because I do have to spend many hours of the day, or I enjoy spending many hours of the day writing. Um, and being as I have a number of uh, pots on the stove. Um, you know, sometimes when an opportunity comes up to write, if I didn't get to write during the day, then I'm going to be writing at night. And, you know, other things get sacrificed as a result. Yeah. You mentioned binge watching, and that's a, a relatively new thing, but it is cool to be able to, uh, you know, it used to be, you, if, if you missed the show when it was like on live, you probably just weren't going to see it. Unless it was, you know, shown again like in reruns, but uh, now you can go back and watch entire series and seasons of uh, TV shows. Oh yeah, no, I I'll stay up all night. <laughs> My eyeballs are burning. <laughs> yeah. 
Are there any particular uh, shows or, or whatever that you've binge watched that uh, that stuck with you? Um, yeah, a whole bunch actually. I mean, I think there's just great shows on television now. It's really inspiring. Yeah. Um, so you know, I'd be sitting here just making a list for you, which would not be any fun for anybody listening. Um, although you know, the Haunting of Hill House, I thought was interesting. Not so much that uh, I thought it was the greatest show, but I liked the conversation that it evoked. There were always you know people sort of talking about what was actually going on and and. Uh, and and I was surprised how many people found it terrifying. Like it was definitely scary, but but um, yeah, people were like <laughs> sometimes not even able to watch it. Yeah, I so don't get that do either. That, but <laughs> I think to be able to do that with a television show is is pretty unique. That's pretty great because generally speaking, we have that experience with movies like horror or thrillers. But uh, to watch a TV show in that way, that's that's pretty cool for it to have that kind of tension. Yeah, as a as a creator, uh, the rise of like the streaming sites, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and uh, all these things. Does that, how has that affected you as uh, as uh, someone who creates things? It's a bit of a double edged sword. I mean, there's definitely, um, you know, I'd like to say there's room for everybody, um, but you know, there's certain requirements, and then there's just getting in the the door. There's having to know someone you know, knowing the right people. Um, and, and it's a constant, um, it's a constant, it's constant work doing that alone is, is just that networking. Um, and we're responsible as creators to do so much of that, you know, you've got to do the networking and the business side and the creative side. And there's only so much a brain can handle, man. (laughs) (laughs) All right. It seems, um, when I have like uh, I had Ed Asner on of uh, a month ago, and uh, he was real uh, not negative, but he was down on a lot of the streaming sites because he said it affected uh, the amount of money you make on on things. So it, it's yep. interesting that if uh, to where people are like have different perspectives on this. There's a lot of the, uh, if I interview oh, like a sure, very young but... person, they have a different you know opinion on it. Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, um, it depends where you are in the business, what you do in the business. And then of course, a very different experience if you're not in the business at all. Um, but what Ed was saying about, um, you know, getting paid, like people aren't making millions of dollars being on a Netflix show. And I think that the, the, um, the falsehood there is that people actually think that that's happening. And I guess maybe, maybe unless you're a major star, you're not, um, you know, you're not, you're not rolling in it. Yeah. No, uh, where well, you know, are you're you? getting exposure. Yeah. You're getting exposure, and sure. a lot of eyeballs are on those streaming sites. So again, double-edged sword, I think, with all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's all gray. It's all gray area. You know what I mean, Neil? Yeah. There's no black and white. I got you. <laughs> so where are you in Canada? Where am I? Um, yeah. in Toronto right now. Uh, all right. We drove up to Toronto from Buffalo. So. And uh, one thing I noticed now in Toronto, and I was told because it's recent, the whole place smells like weed, I noticed. <laughs> well, then you haven't been to Vancouver lately. No, I have not. I've never, I've actually never been it's my only time of being in well, Canada. Van- Vancouver has always smelled like weed. Sorry, Vancouver. No, you probably don't mind. Um, Toronto? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's legal here, but there's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of bullshit going on right now, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't notice a difference. Uh-huh. There's definitely you definitely walking down the street and you will catch a whiff, for sure. Yeah. I quite yeah. like it. I I'm always happy to walk through a cloud of, a cloud <laughs> of marijuana smoke. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I'll take a contact high anytime. <laughs> yeah, it, it just it's legal here too now. I'm in Massachusetts. Uh, just two days yeah. ago, actually, and it's a bit of a deal around. Yeah. No, nah, it's, it's really not a big deal, is it? Like, no, I, mean, I don't know what no, all the hang-up is. Really. Yeah. You know, alcohol's on every corner and in every convenience store, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think it's much, you know... Like, is alcohol yeah. any better for you? Uh, I guess no, maybe if you feel like getting in a fight, if you feel like getting in a fight, then <laughs> go for it. Yeah, I, right, I think... Uh, yeah, I think uh, people who use a lot of alcohol, it's a lot worse for society than someone who's just uh, smoking some weed. 
I think uh, statistically that is true. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so I was just looking over your IMDb. I mean, Go on, sorry. No, no, it's okay. I was just going to bring up Puck Hogs because I like the name. Puck Hogs born to film a film um, that did, oh my God, a hundred years ago. Um, really, really fun film based on, uh, it was like a hockey comedy. Um, and I played a hockey wife. I was Jason Weinberg's wife, and that's another great Canadian actor. Uh-huh. Lots of good people in that film. That's one that everyone should check out. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's an old one. I think it was shot in 15 days, um, which was pretty phenomenal. And uh, Warren's a great director. He's he's pretty prolific. Um, you could look him up. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was a good film. Check it out if you like hockey, even if you don't. Fun. Yeah. All right. I should tell so, my kids uh, to watch that show. I've got two kids and I, or that movie. I don't think they've ever seen it. Okay. Do they watch a lot of your stuff? Um, you know, if we want to have a good laugh, I have a hard time watching anything that I do. I sure. try to avoid that. So I think I do think it'd be weird. We don't, we don't, all, sit like, around, uh, we don't all sit around the TV with popcorn and you uh, know, <laughs> let's watch mom do her thing. Like that's that's not happening. Yeah. They do. Think, they do call me and ask me for writing advice, though. Okay, that's good. I was gonna say it would be weird if you just sat around watching your own stuff all the time. That'd be creepy. Yeah. I bet you there are people who do that, though. I bet you there are lots of people who do that. Oh, I'm sure there are. Yeah, they probably won't admit They're it. They're probably but... not telling you. <laughs> They're not admitting it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so, what are you working on currently? Um. Well. Uh, I just shot some documentary footage for um, uh, for a sizzle that I'm hoping will go to Whistler and, and maybe get uh, a broadcaster or someone on board or maybe some funding um, for uh, this documentary that I'm not going to tell you about right now. <laughs> but uh, it could be interesting. It could be interesting. Um, I just took myself to Vancouver to shoot some stuff that uh, caught my eye. Um, other than that, I'll be... Uh, I'm. I'm submitting to festivals. Uh, my short film, Cleverly Disguised, is is being submitted to festivals, and uh, I'll be making some new videos soon. Uh, maybe a new season, not necessarily best before, but um, some new videos with my comedy partner. Um, and um, oh my gosh, what else? <laughs> Lots of stuff. It's it's usually writing, developing uh, screenplays you know, TV show ideas. That's I, my nose is to the grindstone on that stuff. Yeah. So where can people uh, find you, your comedy stuff online, your, uh, your shorts and anything about, you? um, anything about me? Well, I mean, you can go see, you can check out best before on YouTube, best before series, um, uh, or best before show. I think it's up there as best before series. Um, so you can go check that out, subscribe. It's been relaunched. So it's, it's just, it's all new. Um, it's new release, obviously. So um, that would be one just for fun, like just to check stuff out. You could check out uh, The Next Step on Netflix, Family Channel, here in Canada, I believe. Um, you can always hear me on the radio or TV. I do voiceovers uh, a lot. So you'd recognize my voice probably. Maybe uh, maybe you'll be in your house and you'll hear my voice. And you'll be like, oh, what's Kelly doing here? Yeah, I know here? that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, it was fun to talk to you, and I'm glad you got your yeah, gas. You, you, you got to wherever you're going. <laughs> that was a very hostile uh, gas station. The gas, Ew. I guess, was really cheap, and uh-huh. so everyone was lined up, and cars were just like, you know, like blocking other cars, and then trying to like leap ahead and steal, you know, a spot when someone pulled out. And it, it was. It wasn't fun. I got into an altercation with two people, believe it or not. Oh, really? We should have recorded that. Yeah, because I'm not spoken. Because I can't just stay in my car. I have to get out and say, what, what do you think you're doing? we got a roof here. Uh-huh. We all got to live. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. Well, I'm going to go smoke a turkey. All right, you go do that. Right. In a smoker, not like, not like people are smoking in Toronto. No, you're really going to smoke a turkey. Yeah. yeah. That's the best way to do it. 
going to be I delicious. Do you, do you brine it first? It's, you brine it? it's yeah, it's, it's been brining twenty four hours. So That's the good. ticket. Yeah. I think when you brine it, it doesn't dry out. It's really uh, yeah, way better. It, yeah, the meat's fla- very flavorful and agreed. It doesn't it doesn't get all dry. You don't want a dry turkey. No, you know what you're doing. I'm not going to worry about you. All right, thank you. Very very good. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. It was fun talking to you. Bye. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care.